Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saver CNC. Around here, they call me Router Bob. In this video, we're going to explore making face frame cabinets on a CNC router. Let's get started. A lot of the CNC cabinet making videos that you see are frameless cabinets. And it kind of makes you think, well, maybe there's a reason for that. And so I wanted to address face frame cabinets with a CNC because the machine's just as good for that. But in order to make a face frame cabinet, we're gonna need a face frame. Well, it just happens that CNC Sean has a shop. So let's go see if we can get Sean to make us a face frame. Sean, I've been watching our cabinet videos and we're missing something. What are we missing? Face frame cabinets. Okay. Now we've kind of stayed away from that because we don't have the ability to make a face frame here. So we focus on frameless. But there's quite a few shops that actually still make face frame cabinets. Yeah, we do every day. I could make a frame. That's exactly what I was hoping you would say. But I don't just want to make a a frameless cabinet with a face frame. I want to attack it like a, a face frame shop would do where you combine a lot of stuff and you try to make longer cabinets. I'd yep. like to do it that way. Yeah, let's do it as big as we can. Perfect. Let me design it and I'll get you a drawing of the face frame. Sounds good. I can make a frame tonight, get the material all set to go. Perfect. All right. Let's start out with mosaic. It's a great way to show these concepts. And so I've created a job and then we'll go to settings and basically in mosaic settings, have to do with, with defaults and stuff, what kind of materials and that kind of stuff. Now, before we get any further than that, let's look at libraries. So the first thing is we have to figure out what material we're gonna use, and we're gonna use melamine. And one of the things that's critical, let's see, is the thickness. So you actually want to enter the, the real thickness of the material. In our case, we're gonna be using the three quarter melamine and quarter inch melamine. Now, there's a funny story about this, and. I started out, I was gonna make it with pre-finished plywood till we got the price on the plywood. I said, holy cow. And so Sean said, well, why don't you use melamine? And I'm thinking white melamine. I said, well, that wouldn't be my first choice, but it's okay. And so uh, we ended up getting some of the most beautiful wood grain melamine I've ever seen. So it's, it's certainly an excellent material to use and you'll see that. Okay, so you have libraries, and then you also have a material template. Material template just says, this is what I make each part in the job out of. So that's, that's really what this is. And you see, so when I select a material, you see the thickness. So that's the relationship between all that. Now let's look at one other thing while we're in settings, and that's the concept of parameters. So we go to products and parameters. Now, parameters determine everything about your cabinet job. And when I say that, one of the things we do is we basically configure the software to build the cabinet I want to build. And, and so it has the, the joinery and all that kind of stuff. Now, one of the things that was difficult to learn with early on with Mosaic was which parameters. There's parameters occur at three levels. So out here in the library under products, these are global. So when I make a change to a construction method, from here on, every cabinet I I start with that construction method is the same. There's also parameters within a job and also at the cabinet level. So uh, when you're first setting everything up, you really wanna work on the outside here. Okay, now let's follow these tabs along. Now, if I were doing a kitchen that I need to create a photo for, for a potential customer, I'd lay the room out. I just need a cabinet, so I'm going to order entry. I'm gonna select a catalog, and I'm going to use one that says face frame. And I'm just gonna pick a wall cabinet, that'll be fine. And if I hit edit, now we can, now we can actually edit the individual cabinet. Now, if, if you'll notice, there's a bunch of different tabs here. The first thing I wanna do is, I, this cabinet is going to be uh, 36 high, I'm gonna make it 96 inches and I'm gonna make it 13 deep. A lot of people are doing that now. And now let's look at what we got. If I go over here, here's what, here's what I basically got. Let's go to this, let's fill this, and then let's look at 3D, okay? So basically that's what I've got. Now let's talk about this a little bit because you know, if I basically need an eight foot cabinet, if I were going to use a 
frameless, I probably make three cabinets, 32 inches wide with two doors each. That's one of the main differences between frame, frameless and face frame. In fact, let's take this a little further. Let's uh, let's open this up. So let's go to let's go to face and let's clear this. So now what I have is an empty box. All right. So now there's 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 an eight foot cabinet box. Is what that is. This is one of the main differences between face frame and frameless. It's not just the frame because I could put a face frame on a wall cabinet and it technically is the same. But most face frame cabinet shops build big cabinets. And so basically they build whatever they need. In our case, it's eight feet. And that could be limited on how, if they can get it into the room, it could be limited on how big the machine is uh, or how, how much they can can carry. So I thought in this project, we would take an eight foot cabinet and then um, and build it like you, like you would if you were a face frame shop. This is a good time to talk about choices. Now, choices aren't related to whether you're building a face frame cabinet or a frameless cabinet. It has to do with how you put the back in, how you do your joinery, how you attach a face frame versus a face frame cabinet. Now, let's address those issues. Now, let's look at what we call sectioning a cabinet. So if we look at it in 3D, we're, we basically created the box. We've got unfinished. Everything's fine. So that looks good now. So what we want to do is uh, we want to actually customize it. So we start with face. We pick this opening, and then let's break it up. I want vertical. I want three of them. I'm going to make them open. I could put doors in here, but we really don't care about that. We're not going to make doors in this video. So let's hit that. All right, so there are our three openings. Now, if you contrast this to how we would have done it in a frameless cabinet, we'd have made three cabinets. All right, let's look at it once again in 3D. So basically, now we've sectioned that out. That looks pretty good. And and you notice also, but there's nothing inside. All right, that's an inside component. So we go to interior. We select that. Once again, I'm going to break it up into verticals. I want threes. I'm going to make them partitions. Hit OK. Now let's look at it and you'll see that we have partitions in there. So this is how you build a cabinet. You build it on the screen and then you build it on the machine. Okay, now let's put some shelves in here. So let's select this opening. Okay, I'm going to put three shelves. They're going to be adjustable shelves. And we'll hit OK. And they're there. I'm going to put three shelves here, and they'll be adjustable shelves. Now, in here, I'm going to put one item, and let's click on that. Instead of an adjustable shelf, I'm just going to make it a fixed shelf. And the reason I did that is because uh, I want to create machining on two sides of the partition. So let's see what we got here. So there's our cabinet. Looks pretty good. Now let's look up close and we'll see some stuff here. You notice, you notice I put an adjustable shelf and all of a sudden you see five shelf holes. Now, if you're a, a non-CNC shop, you may have a boring machine that bores all those. But when we get into CNC, every hole has a cost. So when we put an adjustable shelf in, we say, okay, well, I want five holes with it. So you see that now. All right. Now this is a fixed shelf, so it's dadoed in here. Now, and the reason I did that because these partitions have machining on both sides, and we'll, I'll show you how we deal with that later. So that's basically how you section a cabinet. Now that we've got it sectioned, let's take a little pause here. Let's talk about parameters. You see parameters highlighted up here. If I go to parameters, this actually gets me to the, the actual catalog. So parameters are different categories. So let's go with backs. Let's go with this... Uh, uh, let's see, let's go back top. Let's do this one right here. All right. If I hit the question mark, it shows it shows the different things. And this has to do with why I, I said choices earlier. Choices are how you want to do things. So, for instance, here's an example of a back top joint for wall and tall cabinets. And you see this is basically plant on back. Uh, case depth, flush with that. So this gives you an explanation of each one of those. So as you're configuring how you want it to build your cabinet, this is how you do it. So those parameters do that. And I wanted to show you. So the choices are right here. I've got five choices on how I want to deal with that. So that actually comes out of parameters. 
okay, we've got our cabinet design. Now let's switch over to manufacturing. There's one other problem that we're going to have when we get to the optimizer. Let me show you what that is. Th that back of that cabinet's one piece. That's not going to fit on a four by eight sheet because of grain direction. So it's going to tell us that we can I can't position that part because it doesn't fit. All right, so let me show you how you fix that before you get there. So if I go to the inside here and I click on that and I hit this, it says split back and same thing here, split back. Now let's look at it in 3D. Now, now there's three pieces, it'll be able to do it. Okay, so we've got that solved. Now all we have to do is hit OK. Now let's go over to machining. So let's go to cut list, optimize. We want to optimize both materials. Whoops. Hit OK. We'll override those. Now this is actually the optimizer. And so here's the materials. You see the material list here. Okay, here are the parts, the individual parts. And of course there's optimized. But before we do that, let's talk a, a little bit about how we set the machine up and how it works. So for, for one thing, uh, we have to know what tools are in the machine and where they're at. And, and this is how that's handled. If I go over to CNC tooling, okay, I have, let's just look at this. I have tool sets and I have one that I created for this fresh frame cabinet. This is what determines what's set up in the machine. So tool number one is a five millimeter drill. Tool number two is a quarter down shear. Tool three is a half down shear. Tool four is a three eighths compression. And then if I go into individual tool properties, so if I pick that tool and go to tool properties, this is all the information. So this is a feed. So that's how all that stuff goes together. That's how the machine knows what to do. All right, we've got that done. Now we're ready to actually optimize the parts, which is nest them. And we'll hit optimize. And there's our nest. So there's one and there's the other. Now let's look at this. When you see this green part, that means that part has machining on the backside. Now, what are those? Well, those are the partitions, and the partitions have drilling on one side and a dado on the other. And I did that on purpose because I wanted to show you this. So here's how you handle that. You, you want as many parts as possible to have backside machining on one sheet. In our case, it's on one sheet. So what it's going to do is it's actually going to... Uh, to machine one back, the back side first, and then it's gonna cut a little angle down here so that you have something to align with, and that makes the front and back align. So here's all I have to do. I hit generate G-code, calculate, create G-code. I wanna create the primary sheet and also the back side. Now, here's where this comes up. All right, here's the square cuts. I wanna terminate, I wanna add a squaring cut, so it's going to do the machining on the back side, cut that angle, hit OK. OK, here's the first program. And then it creates a second program, and it says flip on it, and that's how you know it's the back one. OK, so we've got that done. Then we come over here. The second sheet doesn't have any back side machining. We generate G-code, calculate G-code. That gets saved automatically. Okay. And then the next thing we would do is come back to material. We'll go to our quarter inch material. There's two pieces of that. We'll optimize it. There's the first one. We'll generate G-code. Calculate. Save that one. And then we'll do our second sheet. Generate G-code. Calculate. All right, so now we've, we've, we have actually taken all our parts, we've nested them, we've generated G-code. Now we're ready to send those programs out to CNC Sean. Sean, did you get the files I sent you? Hey, Rotor Bob, I got everything reviewed it. We're good to go. Great. That completes part one of our face frame cabinet video. If you want to see part two, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you need more information, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for watching.